Good morning. Thank you for joining us for worship today at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Hickory, North Carolina. I do have a few church-related announcements before we get started. Along with our online worship service, we are gathering for worship in the back parking lot, drive-in style, at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings until further notice. Our annual meeting will be next Sunday, November 22nd, at 9 o'clock in the back parking lot. The worship service will immediately follow, and you must be present to vote. The confirmation class will meet after church today in the conference room from 10 o'clock until noon. <clears throat> Social ministry and the youth are collecting food for the food pantry this month. Donations can be dropped off at the church office or brought with you to the drive-in service. A list of items needed can be found on our website. A food pantry is also needing volunteers to help hand out food bags on Wednesdays. Contact the church office to sign up for a morning or afternoon two-hour shift. The afternoon shift has changed to 3 to 5 p.m. Please keep in your prayers Teddy Hafner, Bill Reese, and the family of Donna Woodliffe. If you need anything or have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email the church office. God's blessings to you all. Now let's begin our worship service. Good morning. What a joy to be able to gather together 
to celebrate the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. Next Sunday, if you join us, we'll be celebrating Christ the King Sunday. We'll be looking at each of the seasons of the church year, and we'll be singing a hymn from each of the seasons. We'll also be celebrating Holy Communion. So if you're at home next week joining us online, feel free to have your bread and wine ready, and we'll celebrate how Christ comes to us in, under, and through the bread and the wine. Today we begin our worship service by thanking God for claiming us in the water and in the word, holy baptism. Hallelujah, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to a new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of holy baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, You watered us from the wounded side of Jesus. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in the font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us, O God, in your forgiveness and grace and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life that only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, merciful Master, you created the earth and all that exists and all of the people. We know, O Lord, that everything comes from something, which means Everything comes from you. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom and prepare for us the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The first reading is from the first chapter of Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries about aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in the darkness, For that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, 
Let us be sober and put on the breastplate of love, faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live in him. Therefore, I just encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 25th chapter of St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted them with his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who with two talents came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your town in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Agatha's feather bed is a wonderful children's story written by Carmen Didi. And it was shared with our compromands this past week as they gathered virtually to talk about prayer and our response to what God has given to us using our gifts. Agatha's feather bed tells the story of Agatha who has a shop downtown. It's a shop where she spins yarn, where she weaves cloth, and then sells what she's made. She loves it and people come by to look and appreciate her work. One day, a woman came in with her young son. And as the woman was looking around at the materials, Agatha could tell that this little boy was bored. So she went over to him, and she noticed that he picked up a small piece of red cloth. So she said to him, Do you know where that cloth comes from? The little boy said, No, he didn't have any idea. Agatha said, well, that's silk, and it comes from worms. The little boy went over to another piece of cloth. It was green, and he said, well, 
where does this come from? And she said, that's cotton, and it comes from a plant. Then Agatha picked up another piece of material, and she said, this is wool. It comes from sheep. Little boy picked up another piece of cloth and says, what's this? Where does it come from? And she said, that's linen, and it comes from flax. Agatha said, you know, paper comes from trees, glass comes from sand, everything comes from something. At the end of the day, Agatha went upstairs where she lived, and she was thrilled because her new mattress had arrived, and she was looking so forward to sleeping on this new mattress. It was a feather bed. So as she got ready to go to bed that night, she put on her pajamas, and she let down her hair. It fell, and it fell, and it fell, long, beautiful white hair all the way to the floor. And Agatha then went to sleep, and all of a sudden, she was awakened by a noise outside the window, a pecking sound. So she looked out the window, and there she saw six naked geese. And she said, as she opened the window, could I help you? And one of the geese said, yes, Agatha, we want our feathers back. The goose said, that's your feather bed, but that's our feathers. One of the geese said, everything comes from something, and your feather bed comes from our feathers. Agatha saw the problem, so she said, well, come back in three days. And we'll see what we can do. Well, Agatha, the next morning, closed her shop for three days. She worked pretty much day and night. Three days later, those six naked geese came back. They appeared at the window, and Agatha had left the window open. Those six geese came inside, and they saw these beautiful white coats hanging on the wall. They said, those are wonderful. Where'd they come from? And about that time, Agatha stood up, and they could see... They could see that it was her hair. And Agatha said, well, everything comes from something. You have my hair and I have your feathers. We need each other. And now every morning on Agatha's front doorstep is a goose egg. Agatha was sleeping on those feathers of the six naked geese. The geese were wearing coats made from her hair. Worms make silk, sleep makes wool, sheep make wool, trees make paper, sand makes glass. We're bound together in this world, sharing those things that we have. Bound together as children of God, bound together as blood brothers and sisters, tied together in the blood of Jesus. I believe that God has given to us resources and then invites us to use those resources in responsible ways. We've been given gifts, and they're such varied gifts. I've never seen a congregation that didn't have all the various gifts that they need when it comes to making some kind of ministry happen. Here at St. Stephen's, we have so many different gifts, and we put those together to carry our ministry, even in these challenging times. Gifts we've been given by God to use for God's glory. Now, let's look at the gospel lesson for today. It talks about gifts and how those gifts are used. It's a strange and even challenging text because when biblical scholars talk about the text, they don't agree exactly on how these servants responded and which servants were responding appropriately. Let's look at the text. Fascinating. <clears throat> a man goes on a long, long journey, and he entrusts all of his wealth to his slaves. One slave gets five talents, another slave two, and another slave one, and these slaves receive those talents based on their ability. And I think we're talking here about their financial ability to invest the property of the master or the man who went on the journey. According to their ability, that's important to remember. Now, the slave 
that received the five talents invested those five talents and made five more talents. That's a total of 10. The one who had two talents invested them and doubled it, so now four talents. The one who received the one talent, well, he didn't trust the master. He didn't like the way the master was doing things, so he dug a hole and he buried that talent in the hole. And then he didn't do anything until the master returned. So the master, when he comes back, it's been a long, long time, he meets with the slaves to see what's happened, how they've invested, how they've cared for his wealth. The slave who had the five talents said to the master, I doubled what you gave me. The second slave said to the master, I doubled what you gave me. And the master said to each of those slaves, You've been trustworthy in these few things. I'm going to put you in charge of a lot of things. Enter into the joy of the master. Well, the slave who had received one talent, a very different reaction. In fact, this one slave said to the master, I've always thought of you as a harsh person. I've never had a very good relationship with you because of that. And I noticed in your dealings that you reap and you gather where you didn't sow. And I was afraid, afraid for myself, afraid for other people. So I took what you gave me and I buried it in the ground. And here's what's yours. I'm giving back to you exactly what you gave to me to take care of. The master said, you're lazy and you're wicked. And if you knew what I did... You should have taken these, this talent and invested it and earned interest. Now, what's interesting here in the Jewish law, the scripture, uh, God's people were forbidden for making interest on money. So the man said to this slave, you're worthless. Throw him out and there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Sometimes this particular text is referred to as a stewardship sermon. And the idea would be, in this time, talent, treasure, we share what we've been given by God, knowing that all that we have comes from God. And then if we don't share, then there might well be some kind of punishment. That third slave was afraid of the man. He didn't like how he behaved. And he didn't reap where he sowed. Now, we could say that this is an, an allegory, and God rewards those who share their gifts. But let's think and see where people don't always agree on how these slaves were responding. You see, some would say that the first and second slave who received five talents and two talents were investing very well. Others would say, no, no, no. They were profiting for the man who gave them those talents at the expense of other people. See the difference? Some would say that third slave who received one talent based on his ability was lazy and worthless. Others would say, no, no, no. He was caring for people. He didn't want to take advantage of them. And still others would say that that third slave had a poor and broken relationship with his master, and therefore he didn't want to be helpful. He didn't trust, therefore he was afraid. Now here's my theory and my suggestion on how we interpret this text. I think we don't need to judge the first or second or third slave. We don't need to know who was right and who was wrong. We would never figure that out, and we wouldn't agree. But we all have an opinion, I promise you, and we all have some knowledge of what happened. But Jesus doesn't tell us the authority of all, the Son of God, exactly how we should interpret it. Here's the way I think we should look at that text. We should know that all slaves, first, second, third slave, the five talents, the two talents, and the one talent were trying to do the very best that they knew how 
although they saw the situation very differently. They were giving the very best that they knew. And I think that's what we need to be doing in this day. We don't see the world the same. We all have very different talents, but we need to use the talents that we have in some way to make this world a better place, especially in these stressful days. I'm amazed at all the gifts that we have here at St. Stephen's Church. It's a wonderful array of people who are blessed by God, and I'm so delighted to be a part of the family of God as you share those gifts with each other and the community. I believe that we're facing a mental health crisis in the United States. I read just this week that 80% of the people in the United States are overstressed. Last week, I talked about a stress test and how if you had 300 points, you were overstressed and it could cause all kinds of difficulty emotionally and physically. I think most people have 300 points for the various things that are taking place in our world. Years ago, if people were stressed or had a problem, they would just go onto the front porch. And if it was a Sunday afternoon or some other time, they would talk about their problems there on the porch. They kind of worked through it as they talked and shared. If it was a really challenging problem, they might go to the back porch and talk about it in a more secretive way, maybe with fewer people. You see, part of the problem today is we can't get together on the porch. First of all, we don't have porches on a lot of our houses. And even if we did, we might well be afraid to get together. And if we got together, we'd be wondering about are we going to spread the virus? You see the difficulty? It's a stressful time. But we do have gifts that we can share. We all have the gift of prayer. We have the gift of faith. We have the gift that we can trust God in all things. And remember, everything comes from something. Care and love for each other comes from something. Care and love for each other comes from God. Silk comes from worms. Wool comes from sheep. What you and I have and what we need most comes from God. Remember, according to the text and according to Agatha, ultimately from God, everything comes from God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
we confess our faith as we remember the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We long, gracious God, for Christ's reign. And we pray for the outpouring of your power on the church, on the world, and all in need. These are unusual and stressful times, O oh Lord. To help us remember this day, we pray, and we ask that we remember that all things come from you. Lord of the church, energize your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us as we carry out ministry and congregations and different denominations and help us to participate in your work in the world. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, Search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression and loneliness and illness with your radiant light of love and grace. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Help us, O Lord, to share the gifts that you have given with your world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints that rest, those who rest from their labors, those that we remember in our hearts before you. Help us to live by their example that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
this day we have celebrated the gifts that God gives to us. Those gifts are varied, and yet we know that all comes from God. Everything comes from something. And celebrating that good news that Jesus Christ is Lord and has gifted us in various ways, we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this day. We hope that you'll be able to be with us again next Sunday as we celebrate Christ the King Sunday.